I'm actually going to I'm actually going to take this take this and uh, open it up to you guys and find out if you guys have any questions, um, whether they're for Ron or for myself. Um, you know, I can get deeper into the to the uh, concrete uh, surface conditions as far as that kind of testing and stuff like that. But does anybody have any questions? Oh, come on. Somebody's got to have one. Ron, you got a question? What? Okay, make comment. Regarding the slab being at, uh, what did you say it was, 81? 81. 81%. That's not normal. <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. The Just a rule of thumb for the drying rate of concrete goes something like this. Approximately 30 days of drying time for each inch thickness of concrete to get to somewhere between 85 and 90 percent relative humidity. That's under good drying conditions, which many slabs do not see. So I want to make, make it very clear that yes, the slab was poured last week. Jason mentioned it had a fast drying agent, but most slabs, especially lightweight aggregate concrete slabs above grade on pan decking, are going to take a long time to dry and often the general contractor or the or the engineering company on the job they don't want to believe it because it comes down to crunch time and you as flooring installers your time has been crunched because all the other trades have taken up your time and you're down to the wire and they want you to put the flooring down but it is what it is. It takes a long time for concrete to dry. So I just wanted to make, wanted to make that comment. So are there any, any questions? Jason and I are going to... Yes, sir. How many of these tests do you do for thousands per Okay, the, there were two questions. The first one was, can the heat from the drilling skew uh, your test results? And the second part of that is, how many tests per thousand square feet uh, do you do? The answer to the second one is the standard for doing calcium chloride testing was is three for the first thousand and one for every thousand after that. It, the same is true with this test method. It doesn't, that doesn't change. And there are some good logical reasons for that. That's why the ASTM committee uh, developed that. The first question is, yes, there will be some heat, but you don't, we don't see, and I, and I think my colleagues here that have uh, some different types of, of competitive devices uh, would agree with me. I don't typically see a high temperature when, when we first insert the, uh, the uh, device in the hole. We don't see that. But there may be an effect of wicking away some of the moisture temporarily until it comes back in the hole. That phenomenon may occur, but I haven't seen that being a, being a big deal. But again, the acclimation time, according to the ASTM standard for documenting your readings, is 72 hours. And that will likely change to make it shorter because relative humidity is a fairly fast uh, resulting test no matter what kind you're using, as opposed to a calcium chloride test, which requires 60 to 72 hours. But no, not much effect. I've done a lot of holes, and I don't see the temperature being hot or, or high. And it, I, it would probably be somewhat dependent on the concrete. What, one of the things, too, that I wanted to throw out, and, you know, of course, we're sitting there talking about, you know, test, retest if you have to because the slab's wet. Um, you know, once you do have that number that you're looking for, uh, you have some VCTs out there. They'll go as high as 85% acceptable without doing any kind of remediation product. Um, but whatever that number is, once you actually do find it, the other part of what we physically have is you're going to leave that sensor in the floor. And what you're going to do is there's a little metal cap that comes in that starter kit and comes with each replacement pack of sensors that will physically be dropped in the hole. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to come back with whatever kind of patching compound you're physically using 
and just fill the hole in. So when the guys are coming through doing their floor prep, they can just come through and they're just going to come through and just patch that whole thing in there. Now the rationale behind the, the metal disc is as I continually tell people day in and day out, documentation, documentation, documentation. And one of the things we provide is a floor chart and a um, recording piece of paper that you can take along with the certificate, calibra certificate calibration for the sensing device, put that in the job file. Along with that metal disc, you could actually, if push came to shove, you could, you could go and physically show them where those tests were done at. So you have a floor that for whatever reason goes sideways. You end up, they come back and they say, did you do moisture testing? Yes, I did. You show them the documentation they have and they say, well, that's great. You could have just written that yesterday. <coughs> oh, okay. Well, let's go on the job site. And you can physically, based on the information you have, go around and you could actually prove with a metal detector where these things are at. So it's just one additional piece of the puzzle for you to be able to, to uh, cover yourself in our uh, society that loves to lit lit litigate problems. Hey, Jason, we had, there are a couple more questions. That's I fine. Think. One was... The question is, what is the easiest way, if you don't know the specific gravity of the wood that you're trying to measure, what is the easiest, quickest way to find that out? Well, if you're on the job site, there really isn't an easy, quick way to find that out. But there are a lot of resources. If it isn't in the manual, if it isn't in a Wagner manual, uh, I point people to resources on the Internet where you can look up the specific gravity for different species and find that. If, but again, if you're on the job site, that's, it's not an easy task to just know the specific gravity. Uh, most species are known, and you know what you're going to run into when you go on the job site, usually, but not always. So the honest answer is, on a, on a job site, there's not a real easy way to do that. Yeah, good question. The, the question was... If it's an engineered wood with different materials uh, uh, in the wood, and we, we know what engineered wood is, are these meters effective? We don't have specific calibrations for a lot of the engineered wood products. Uh, we try to do oven dry testing and determine what some of them are. Uh, bamboo has been a, a, big, a big issue in the market. We've done some oven dry testing to try and come up with settings. But there are so many, it's really hard to keep up. But we do try and keep up, and uh, I know our worthy competitors do as well to try and determine the settings for these products. So the engineered wood phenomena, it's outrunning us right now, but we're, we're going to try and get on top of it and come up with uh, some decent settings for engineered wood as well. But right now, that, that's, a, that's a tougher one. Good question, though. Right. The question. Stand right there. <laughs> I will. Scary. The, qu the first question was about radiant heat. If there's radiant heat in the concrete slab, what do you do about it? Be you don't want to hit anything, in the and you don't want to hit a hydronic pipe. There are a lot of things you don't want to do. There are methods to determine where the radiant heat coils are. I ran into um, a gentleman, actually took a call from a guy in Wisconsin, I think, maybe two or three years ago. And I can't, I've been unable to track him down again to find out. There's, there is a type of paper that's heat sensitive, and he can lay it on the floor and it will map it. And, and maybe you're aware of that. I'd like to know where it is, if, if you, somebody knows. And you can actually map it out and then drill. The and there's something related to that, and that is, uh, let's say you have a, a slab with post-tension cable in it, a structural slab. Well, you do not want to drill into a post-tension cable. That can wreak havoc on a concrete slab. So there, 
often before testing is done, there are companies that can come in and actually with a, uh, with a scanner determine where those cables are or rebar. Usually the rebar is, is not part of the picture, but a post-tension cable is going to be shallow enough that you might hit it. And you, again, you do not want to hit it, so it's related to that. And then the gypcrete or gypsum type products, gypcrete's a trade name actually, uh, but anyway, thin product over, we have a slab and then and then gypcrete over it. Well, right, right. There are, there is a particular manufacturer of a gypsum product that, that uses RH testing and you can use RH testing but you, you just don't have to go as deep when you're, when you're doing it. So RH testing can be used on, let's call it gypcrete or gypsum overlayment kinds of products. Uh, it can be used. And, there are, be. and they're also on the, gyps, on the gypsum side, they're also, you know, any of the deep pour gypsum stuff, they're looking real hard at, you know, doing more stuff with the relative humidity testing in that application also. The, the question was uh, testing wood-based subfloors such as OSB and plywood. Yes, we have settings for those and uh, the, the other manufacturers of meters, I'm sure they have settings for OSB uh, as well as uh, plywood because that's important. You need to know that for an installation of wood flooring. National Wood Flooring Association has a lot of their guidelines now and, and by the way, they, they are moving... Uh, strongly toward recommending relative humidity testing now, more strongly than they ever have for wood flooring related applications. Yes, sir. The question was, you, you will have expansion joints in a slab, cracks. Do you, uh, do you take readings near those expansion joints? The ASTM standard, ASTM F2170, is pretty much silent, not completely, but pretty much on location of, of where you put the uh, sensors for testing. Common sense tells you, though, that you should test where you have a transition from one, if you know, from one pore to another pore. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to get a good sampling of the different trucks or different concrete loads or pours in a slab. That, that's, that's part of that. It's, and that's just common sense because one truck load may vary a little bit in its water cement ratio from another truck load of uh, concrete. So testing there, I know some friends of mine, colleagues that are well known out in the industry that, that do that. They will test in areas that are maybe suspect or they might be otherwise concerned about. The ASTM standard does call for, and maybe one of my colleagues can correct me if I don't hit it right, I believe for slabs on grade and below grade, we want to have a sensor within one meter of every external wall. I think that's true. I haven't heard anybody tell me I'm wrong yet, so I guess that's right. But that's the, that's the only thing that ASTM F2170 says about location. But just use common sense where there's a different pore, where you have a transition, uh, where you have a, a column perhaps and you have a lot of concrete, you have a big mass of concrete. You're going to have a different scenario there near a column. You have to remember that. Okay, our time is up. Thank you very much. We appreciate it.